Tess from Ruby Tuesday Art and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to be painting something really fun, really uh, flowing and whimsical and beautiful. We're going to be painting loose watercolour roses uh, and you'll note that they are a bit different to the roses that we painted a few weeks ago. Ooh. <laughs> in my semi-realistic roses tutorial. Uh, the loose technique is more free and flowing and it's sort of, we're aiming to just give the impression of a rose rather than paint something that is really realistic. Um, so before we begin, I think it would be really helpful if you haven't already watched a couple of my videos, uh, the brush strokes video, which I'll link in the video description and my color theory video. You should go back and watch those two just because they'll be quite helpful with understanding the strokes that I'm using for the uh, rose technique. Can't use my words today. <laughs> um, yeah, so go back and watch the brush strokes video and really pay attention to the C curves technique and also the process of using the tip of your brush, pushing down and then lifting back off the page and give that a bit of a practice before you actually come back and try this video because I think you'll have a lot more success if you do it that way. And the color theory video is also gonna be really helpful, but I guess optional, you don't have to watch it first. Um, it just, it might be handy if you are hoping to mix a particular shade of pink or something like that for your rose petals. So definitely go back and watch the brush strokes technique video uh, if you haven't already and maybe even the color theory one too. And then when you're ready to go, come back, settle in, maybe even grab a cup of tea and have a go at watercolor roses with me. So let's get started. So I'm using my size four round brush from my watercolor kit and I'm picking up a purpley red that I mixed earlier and I just want to get it really concentrated on the end of my brush and I'm going to start with like a really messy squiggly spiral that goes around once maybe twice and then it sort of links back onto itself and then I'm going to go around the outside of that with a squiggly diluted C curve. And I'm just gonna keep repeating those C curve shapes going around and around the outside of the flower just a couple of times because it's quite small. So I did that really quickly and I'm gonna do it again for you. So I start with a squiggly spiral in the middle and then after that I start doing squiggly C curves going out around the flower. And as I get further out, I push down with the brush further. So I'm not just using the tip, but I'm also using the belly of the brush. And then towards the end of each petal, I'm sort of lifting it back up again to create like a thin sort of end to the petal. And a really important thing to remember here is to make sure that you're leaving plenty of space between these C curves or the petals, because that white space is actually what means that we can tell this is a flower and not just a blob, if that makes sense. Now, if you feel like this is going way too fast and you're like, what is a C curve? I'm so confused. Don't stress, I have got a video all about brush strokes, uh, which I'll, I'll link to here. Um, you should go back and watch that and all of this will be a lot easier and make heaps more sense if you haven't seen it already. So, yeah, if you haven't watched it, I'd recommend you actually pause this, go back and watch it and then come back here and you're going to find this much more easy and fun to paint along with. All right, so I'm moving up to my size 12 brush now just to show you I'm doing the exact same thing but on a bigger scale. Except I've got too much water on my brush and it's all running onto the page. This is kind of a good example of not having great control over the painting and the brush because I just have too much water. I'm trying to salvage it by dabbing a little bit more paint in and it's fine. 
but it's re a really good idea to remember to dab your brush on either like drag it on the edge of the jar or on your paper towel before you start painting so you don't have so much water in the brush ready to pour onto the page. So you'll see I did a little squiggly sort of spiral and then as I was working out away from that spiral I've started doing these C curves and I'm keeping them really really wiggly and messy and they're getting more diluted as I'm working my way out. So the petals are getting bigger as I'm working my way out and they're more diluted so there's less paint on the brush and more water on the brush and that's what gives them this really sort of whimsical airy look um, and yeah that wiggling motion is really important too like honestly you can probably see the film shaking a little bit but it's because I'm wiggling my hand so much like you're not trying to get it neat and tidy you want it to be messy but just make sure there's plenty of white space between the petals so now I'm going to grab my um, orangey yellow that I also mixed up earlier just doing the exact same thing again but with a different color and again probably a bit much water on the brush but I'm doing some squiggly spirals in the middle and then working my way out with uh, the C curves that are really diluted and really pushing down with the belly of the brush for the middle of those C curves and honestly if you if you haven't seen the brush strokes video you really need to go back and watch it because uh, this this might seem a little bit confusing or complicated if you haven't so with this rose I actually started with a couple of dots or a cluster of dots in the middle and then started doing the C curves out from there you might find that a little bit easier than doing the kind of spiral thing it's really up to you what works best for you um, and you can see that yeah I'm really really wiggling the brush as I work and I'm also uh, dabbing some more color back into the middle of the rows just to add some depth um, and variety to the color and also I had I had gone pretty diluted for this particular flower um, so you could barely see some of those petals but yeah it's a really good idea to dab some more of your color like a concentrated version of the color into the middle of the rows or even another different color into the middle just have a go so now I've gone down to my size zero brush and I'm doing the exact same thing again, just teeny, teeny, tiny. So this, this technique can be applied to painting roses really of any size, just change up the size brush that you're using. And you'll notice that with the teeny, tiny roses, I'm not doing as many layers of petals it's just sort of one little spiral and a couple of petals rather than doing um quite as many as the bigger um roses but i'm still applying those same principles still getting a bit more diluted as i work my way out and making those petals a bit wider as i'm working my way out except for that one that i just painted which was quite thin and i'm just dabbing some more color back into the middle the concentrated color so just keep practicing this over and over again. Fill up a page or two of watercolor paper. Um, it's just really great to practice and it becomes much more easy and natural as you go. But I can't stress enough that you don't want to aim for neat and tidy. Wiggly and messy is awesome and actually often looks more effective. So now I'm mixing up a green uh, just to show you how I paint leaves for roses. I've got a whole video about painting whimsical leaves but this is specific to the rose kind of leaf so I'm doing another C curve like we were doing before and then a C curve mirroring it and then dabbing in some more uh, concentrated color probably a bit much there but you get the idea so coming out from that leaf I have another one um, with a couple of C curves I mucked that one up a little bit but you get the gist of it and you really want to keep wiggling the brush as you do these leaves. So a C curve, then another C curve mirroring it and try and get the tip of the leaf to be quite pointed if you can. Um, and yeah, so go back and watch my video all about uh, painting whimsical leaves if you want to learn how to do that in more detail. But I thought I should show you just how I adapt those leaves that are in that tutorial um, uh, to be used specifically with roses. And I'll draw, a, oh, paint, sorry, 
a stem of leaves that just like that um, so just using that C curve but really wiggly and messy and I'm doing this still with my tiny zero brush mostly because I've run out of space but I'm dabbing in some concentrated paint at the ends of those leaves too. And you can see that there's like a little bit of um, white space in the middle of the, those leaves, which I'm actually leaving deliberately as a bit of a highlight. So now I'm painting you a bud. So I sort of did two C curves really thin with another line up the middle. I'm having trouble describing this one, but you can see it um, to sort of look like a rosebud that hasn't yet opened. And I'm just dabbing in a little bit of the colour that the rose will be um, once it blooms. Mm -hmm. 